Hello, my name is Colin, and in this video, we're going to be looking at Blender 2.8 Beta Shortcuts. It was about a month ago today that Blender 2.8 Beta came on the scene, and with it came a bunch of new features and new keyboard shortcuts for us to get used to. So in this video, I want to go over new shortcuts that are in this version of Blender that you might not be used to that have changed or been added to Blender since Blender 2.79. There are about 22 new shortcuts and we're gonna go over them rapid fire. So let's go ahead and jump in. Of course, if you like this video, or if you learned something, go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps me out. And click on that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this one in Blender and in tech. And click on that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. And check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash bornzg. On that page, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. You might've noticed that at the start of this video, I have a new intro animation created in Blender 2.8 and rendered in the new EV render engine, but the music for that intro was created by Nicholas of the band Lazy Saviors. Here's a sample of one of their tracks. Their new album, The Reciprocity Principle, is out on iTunes and Amazon now. Check it out, I'll put links in the description area below. So let's go ahead and jump in. I will note that in this video, I'll be going over keyboard shortcuts as if you had left all of these quick setup uh, settings on the Blender 2.8 beta splash screen alone. That means that you're using the Blender shortcuts and not the old Blender 2.7 shortcuts. You're also using select with left click. Yes, that does affect uh, what keyboard shortcuts you have available to you, of course. And you're using the space bar to play and it does not matter what you're using for your theme, but I'll just leave it at Blender Dark. So number one is the space bar. If you press the space bar now in Blender 2.8, you get the play animation feature of Blender. This used to be Alt A on your keyboard in Blender 2.7 and before, but now I'm gonna go ahead and press the space bar again. Space bar is now play and pause. Alt A will do something totally different. We'll get to that in just a sec. Number two is control shift space. Of course in Blender, if you press the space bar, you play, and if you press the space bar again, you pause. But what if you wanna play backwards or play in reverse? For that, you would press control shift space, and that plays in reverse. It's just a handy keyboard shortcut. I don't use it a lot, but it's there for you. Number three is F3, or the function three key on your keyboard will bring up search. Before, in Blender 2.7 and before, if you press the space bar, it would bring up a search window. Well, if the space bar is now the play and pause feature, they've moved the search function up to the function three key, which is actually the industry standard. In lots of other programs, the function three key, I'll press it right now, brings up the search window and that's how you can search. So if you wanna know how to, or you can't remember how to insert a keyframe, you can type in insert, uh, and there it is, insert keyframe. You can search here with the F3 key. Number four is shift space for the tools quick menu or popover over your mouse. Of course, Blender 2.8 has this new toolbar with all access to all these tools. And of course, if you press tab to go into edit mode, you get different sets of tools. Same if you're sculpting or something like that. Well, if you wanna quickly access one of these tools without having to move your mouse all the way over here and select it, you can press the shift key and the space bar together and it'll bring up a popover, which lets you quickly select uh, from any of the tools that you currently have in your tool shelf. Of course, if you're in a different mode, like edit mode, you have more options and they also appear if you press shift and space bar, you get them here. You'll notice that there are a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that you can access these tools with as soon as you bring this up. And so you can press, you know, shift space and then M and that will bring up the measure tool. So again, that's shift and space. Number five is A and Alt A for selecting and deselecting. In previous versions of Blender, if you press the A key on your keyboard with your mouse in the 3D view uh, port window, you would select everything in your scene. And if you pressed A again, it acted like a toggle to deselect everything. But now, I'm pressing deselect and it's not working or A again and it's not working. That's because the A key is select only. And if you press Alt A on your keyboard, it deselects. So now A has a single function and Alt A has a single function. This is more in line with other tools on Blender like hide. If I select an object and press H on my keyboard, it hides an object. And if I wanna unhide that object, I press Alt H. It's more in line with that. So A is select and Alt A is deselect. But number six is A twice, A, A. And what that does is it kind of solves the problem of having to memorize that new A and Alt A keyboard shortcut. If you have something selected, I'm gonna select this cube and you double tap A, it'll actually deselect everything really quickly. So now you have that same keyboard shortcut. You don't have to 
hunt with your thumb to press the alt key if you don't want to if you select something and you want to deselect everything tap a twice and everything will be deselected number seven is the tilde key the tilde key on your keyboard is that little squiggly key that's right next to your one key on your number row on your keyboard if you press it with your mouse in the 3d viewport you get a new pie menu which actually lets you select what view you want to see your 3d viewport from this will only work again with your mouse in this 3d viewport but now if you press the tilde key you can go and see your top view and it'll automatically switch by default to the top orthographic view and then if you orbit with your mouse uh, wheel pressed down it'll go back into perspective so the tilde key is a really handy keyboard shortcut especially for beginners to be able to quickly go into the view of their choice but of course it's a pie menu which means that if you press its key and then you immediately quickly swipe with your mouse without pressing any mouse buttons to one of the directions it'll switch into that direction automatically so I'm gonna actually press escape on my keyboard I'm gonna press the tilde key and then immediately swipe to the left and it'll actually go to the left view in my 3d viewport so one two three I pressed the tilde key and I moved my mouse quickly to the left and it automatically went to my left view this works for any direction and it works pretty naturally if I press the tilde key and swipe up it goes to my top view if I press the tilde key or tilde key and swipe down it should go to my bottom view and what else is there well I can go to my back front camera to the bottom left and uh, view select that's really handy so again that's the tilde key for the different views that you can have in your 3d viewport window another keyboard shortcut that brings up another very handy pie menu is the control tab keyboard shortcut that brings up your modes options so if i press control tab on my keyboard with a mesh object selected it'll bring me up the different modes that i can go into for that object of course a mesh like my cube has object mode and edit mode kind of the two basic modes but meshes also have weight paint vertex paint texture paint and sculpt mode so these are easily accessible with control tab on your keyboard Number nine are the one, two, and three keys when you're in edit mode of a mesh. If I press tab to go into edit mode of this default cube, and if I wanna switch quickly between vertex mode, edge mode, and face select mode, that's now the one, two, and three keys on my keyboard. You can see that up there it changed. So if I press one, it goes to vertex select mode. I can select vertices on my mesh. Of course, if I wanna go and select edges, I could press two and then faces. I can press three and I can select faces. So that's one, two, and three in edit mode. Number 10 is control space to maximize your current editor window. If I have a mouse in the 3D viewport window and if I press control and the space bar, it'll maximize that single editor window in Blender to be almost full screen. It'll maximize it to take up most of the viewport, but I still have my file menu. I still have my toolbar at the top and I still have my tool shelf of course because that's part of the 3d viewport and I press control space again it'll bring back all of my other windows so control space will maximize any editor window that your mouse is currently in so if I want to bring up my outliner window for some reason to make it full screen or almost full screen I can press control space when my mouse is in that window and it'll make that maximize and same keyboard shortcut again to unmaximize it Number 11 is control alt space to a full screen any window that your mouse is currently in. If I press control alt space on my keyboard, it'll actually make that editor window into full screen mode. And again, control alt space will un full screen that window. This is different than the last keyboard shortcut control space where I still had my file menu and the toolbar. If I press uh, control space to unmaximize that window and I press control alt space, that will actually get rid of that toolbar and I can have a true full screen mode uh, for that editor window that I'm currently in. And as always, if I put my mouse in some other window and I press Control Alt Space, it will full screen that different menu. So it's not just, or that screen, so it's not just the 3D view window, it can be any window editor that your mouse is currently in. Number 12 is a shift and any of the function keys on your keyboard to switch editor window types. If I have my mouse in the large 3D viewport window and I wanna switch it into any of the other kinds of windows that I have access to, of course you can do that manually with your mouse by clicking on this little menu in any of the editor windows and you can change to any other kind of editor window, but there are keyboard shortcuts for this. So if I press uh, escape or just move my mouse out of that and if I press shift and F1 on my keyboard, it'll switch this window 
because my mouse was in this window to a file what is this called it's a file browser window so let's keep on going with my mouse in this window still if i press shift f2 it brings up the tracking or movie clip editor window shift and f3 brings up the material or shader editor node editor window if i press shift f3 again i believe it toggles between the different kinds of node editors because in letter 2.8 the node editors are now three different types we have the shader editor the compositing editor which are both nodes as well as the texture node editor those are all three different node editors that are all shift f f3 so they toggle through those three shift f4 4 brings up the Python console, which I never use. Shift F5 brings up the 3D viewport. Shift F6 brings up the graph editor. And if I press it again, I believe it switches over to the driver editor, which again are separate windows now, graph editor and drivers. Uh, Shift F7 on my keyboard brings up the properties window. Shift F8 brings up the sequencer window or the video editor in Blender. And of course you can switch between the sequencer, the preview or uh, both. So you have a video editor here. Uh, Shift F9 on my keyboard, it goes to the outliner window, which is the same as up here. Shift F10 brings up my uh, UV image editor window. And I believe Shift F10 will toggle between the, the two different modes we have the, and the icons, I'm not familiar with them yet. Uh, we have the image editor window and the UV editor window, which are now separated in a newer release of the Blender beta. If you download the beta a few weeks after it first came out, you'll notice that we have now two separated windows out. They're both Shift F10. Shift F11 on my keyboard brings up the script editing window and Shift F12 brings up the dope sheet. And I believe if you press Shift F12 again, it'll toggle between the timeline and the dope sheet. So that's the Shift key along with any of the function keys on your keyboard. Number 13 is control and the tilde key, and that will show or hide the transform manipulator in your 3D viewport window. What am I talking about here? Well, if you're using one of the move or rotate or scale tools, you'll notice that you get a little set of handles, whether they're arrows or circles or hula hoops or little lines with squares on them. These are called transform manipulator gizmos. And if you don't want to see them on your screen because maybe they get in the way of what you're doing, you can press control tilde on your keyboard and that will hide it. And if you press control tilde, it will show it. You can do the same thing by going up to the overlays menu at the top and you can unselect active tools that will do the same thing or you can actually hide all gizmos and that would include things like uh, that little uh, display up here with all your controls but you might not want to do that you might just want to hide the controls that you're currently working with on the object that you have selected so if you want to hide just that active tools gizmo again it's control and the tilde key on your keyboard that toggles it back and forth. Number 14 is Alt Z on your keyboard and that will toggle X-ray mode. If you're looking at a mesh and you want to not just see the surface of the mesh, but you want to see through the mesh to the other side, you might want to press Alt Z on your keyboard to enable X-ray mode. Yes, you can do that by pressing this little two square button up on your menu. You can just click it. That will disable or enable X-ray mode. But again, Alt Z on your keyboard will do that for you with a keyboard shortcut. Number 15 is is Alt Shift Z on your keyboard to enable or disable overlays in your 3D viewport. If I press Alt Shift and Z on my keyboard, it turns off all of those overlays on my screen. If I press Alt Shift and Z again on my keyboard, it brings them back. So it's a toggle. Yes, you can do this again by pressing this little overlap circle button next to overlays and that'll do the exact same thing. But Alt Shift Z does the same thing with a keyboard shortcut. Number 16 is shift and the tilde key to enter fly through mode. I rarely ever use this, but if you want to go and kind of zoom through your scene, like you're playing a video game, well, you can press shift and the tilde key on your keyboard, and then your mouse becomes kind of the controller in like a first person shooter kind of a video game, and you can look around your scene. But as with like a video game, you can press the W, A, S, and D keys to move around. So the W key will move forward, and I believe if you hold shift, it'll let you move fast. So now I'm moving really quickly through my scene. If I just stop that, 
and point to in the other direction. You'll see I'm pointing back and I can press W or Shift and W to move quickly. Of course, if I want to move left and right, I can press A and D and S will also move backwards also with the Shift key. And I believe if you press Q and E, they move up and down in your space. So that's the Shift and the tilde key on your keyboard. You can press escape to exit that mode and you can press shift tilde and you can move your mouse around just like that. Number 17 is control H to isolate objects by collection, which hides an entire set of collections except for the one that you're currently in. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add, I'll press shift A on my keyboard. I'm gonna add a monkey to my scene and I'm gonna use the move tool and move it over. I'm gonna press M on my keyboard to, to move the selected object into a new collection. So the M key brings up this new move to collection uh, menu. It's a pop over menu. And I'm gonna select new collection. I'm gonna name this uh, monkey C for monkey collection and I'll press okay. So now I've got two collections in my scene. I'm gonna press shift A again. I'm gonna add an icosphere. I'll move it over here and I'll press M on my keyboard again with that uh, icosphere selected. I'm gonna make a new uh, collection. I'm gonna type ISO C uh, for the name of that collection. So now I have three collections. I've got all the starting objects in the first one that's just named collection. I've got a monkey C a collection and in ICO C uh, collection. If I'm working on, let's say, the cube and I don't want anything else to bother me that's not in the current collection, just my default collection, I can press Control H on my keyboard and I can say hide objects by collection. And then if I select collection, it'll actually hide all of the other collections. If I press Control H again, I can bring them back really easily or I can just click these eyes really easily. So what Control H does is when, it, when you bring it up, it'll actually let you uh, say which collection you wanna keep on the screen by clicking on it. So if I wanna keep only the Icosphere collection on my screen, I can press Control H and select it and it'll isolate that one and I can unselect uh, or click the eyes again to bring the other ones back up. Number 18 are the number row keys on your keyboard to again isolate collections. The number keys on your keyboard in Blender 2.79 and before used to isolate layers in your 3D viewport. Well, layers are gone, but now if you press the number row keys in your keyboard, not the numpad keys, but the ones at the top of your keyboard, they will isolate collections by order in your outliner window. So if I mouse over in the 3D viewport, if I press the one key on my keyboard, it will isolate the first collection in this list. If I press two, it'll isolate the second one, three isolates the third one, and so on and so forth. So the number keys are very helpful if you're managing a large scene with lots of collections. Number 19 is the C key on your keyboard to make a new collection. Now you might be thinking to yourself, the C key, isn't that the keyboard shortcut for circle select? And yes it is. If you tap C when your mouse is in the 3D viewport window, you get that circle on your mouse and you can scroll up and down and you can circle paint things and it's not very good anymore because you now have this key up here or the selection active tool up here. So I'm gonna press escape. Instead, if you wanna make a new collection, if you put your mouse in the outliner window and then you press see on your keyboard it just makes a new collection and then you can double click on it and then you can type a name for it uh, fourth collection and now you're free to add any uh, objects in your scene to it so again the C key your mouse has to be in the outliner window for this to work to make a new collection Number 20 is Shift M on your keyboard. Of course, if you select an object in your scene and you wanna move it into another collection, you can press the M key on your keyboard. But one of the cool features about collections in Blender 2.8 is the fact that you can have the same object instanced or referenced, pardon me, in other collections. So you can have the same object in multiple collections. How do you do that? Well, right now my monkey head is only in the monkey C collection. If I hide it, uh, it's gone. But if I select the monkey head and I press shift M on my keyboard, it brings up this new link to collection uh, pop over menu. And I can select, let's say another collection, this fourth collection for that item to be a member of. So if I select it, 
Now, if I hide this fourth collection, it hides the monkey head because the monkey head is part of both the monkey C, that number two collection in this outliner window, and the fourth collection. And you notice that it hides this entire uh, monkey C collection because it's the only object in that collection. If I were to, let's say, select that collection and add another object to it, let's say a uh, cone, and I were to select the monkey head and press H on my keyboard, it would only hide it um, here and this entire collection because again, it has only that object in it. So Shift M on your keyboard will let you instance, or pardon me, link uh, objects into multiple collections. Number 21 is the F2 or Function 2 key on your keyboard. If you uh, press F2 on your keyboard, it'll bring up the File Context Menu pop-up menu. And what this lets you do is very quickly open a file or make a new file from wherever your mouse currently is in the 3D viewport. So F2 will let you make a new file or open a different file, but it'll also very quickly let you uh, link or append other 3D objects from other Blender files into this Blender file. I'm not gonna demonstrate that, but here it is. It's the file context menu. It's kind of a quick version of the file menu and some of the most common things you can do with files right at your fingertips. Again, that's F2 on your keyboard. Number 22 is F4 on your keyboard. Remember F3 is search, but F4 on your keyboard is the window context menu. And here you can quickly make a new window. Again, you can have multiple or at least two windows in Blender. If I click on new window now, it brings up another Blender window. That's great. Again, F4 is kind of a quick shortcut wherever your mouse is to this window menu. If I press F4, I also get a new main window option. I can also split my window in two, so it's kind of anything to do with the view or layout of Blender on your screen. Number 23, the period key on your keyboard is now the keyboard shortcut to change the pivot point of your selected object or objects. Right now, if I were to have two objects that I'm working with, I'm gonna press Shift A on my keyboard and add, oh, let's say a UV sphere. And if I were to move that over, if I have two objects selected, of course, I can hold Shift to do that. I can just shift and click on something. The gizmo on my screen, the transform manipulator tool will be in the median point between the those two objects in the middle. But if I don't want that to be the case, I can press the period key on my keyboard and that will bring up a pie menu to let me select where I want the pivot point to be. The default is medium point. And yes, you can change that. I'm gonna press escape on my keyboard. The menu for this is up here. You can still do it this way. But again, the period key is a keyboard shortcut. Uh, it'll be handy for you if I wanna change um, the pivot point to the active element. That means the last or most recently selected objects of multiple objects. Uh, in this case, I uh, selected, I think, the, uh, the cube last, I think. Let's see if I try that again. Yes, and I press R on my keyboard. It doesn't rotate from the middle point between those two. That's where my gizmo is. If I move it, you'll see my gizmo's right there. Let's say if I press the period key, what else is there? Well, I can select, let's say, a 3D cursor. And now if I tap R on my keyboard, it'll rotate around wherever my 3D cursor is. Uh, that's great. So that's the period key to bring up that pivot point pie menu. Number 24, control page up and control page down will cycle through your workspaces in your current file. If you have an extended keyboard on your computer, that means you've got the extra number pad and the extra little buttons like page up, page down, home, things like that on your keyboard. This will be handy for you. If you want to quickly move between your workspace tabs, you don't have to move your mouse all the way up to the top and click on them. You can press control and page down will go to the left. So I switched from layout to modeling. If I press control page down again, it'll go to sculpting, UV editing, whatever I have up at the top, it'll kind of go through them uh, one by one and it'll loop back to the beginning again. Control page up will go in the opposite direction. It'll move left and cycle through all the active workspaces. So that's a very handy one, control page up and page down. Last up, number 25 is the W key to rotate between your different selection tools on your new toolbar on the left hand side of a 3D viewport. If I press the W key on my keyboard, it will rotate between the box select tool, the circle select tool, which is great. It kind of replaces the C key on your keyboard uh, and it's better. You should play with it. 
The W key will also let me get the freeform selection tool uh, just like that. The W key again brings me back to my basic selection tool. So left click to select things and it'll bring me back to the box select tool. Let me box select things. This is great. You'll use them all the time. That's the W key. It cycles between all of your different selection tools in the new Blender toolbar. So that will be it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, of course, click that like button below this video on YouTube. It really helps me out. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Blender and in Tech, click on that subscribe button as well. And click on that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Of course, check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. On that page, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.